We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play -play alongside Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton. It's time to dive into BYU-Utah basketball and what happened in Salt Lake City with former BYU head basketball coach Steve Cleveland. Coach, he joins us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Welcome to the show. Uh, in your perspective, what happened to BYU last night that uh, the Cougars led a game they led basically the entirety of regulation in slip away? You know, one, one of the things that really sticks out to me has to do with Yoli. And I, I started looking at his stat line. He scored 16 points in the first eight minutes of that game. And then the next 12 minutes of the first half, he scores two points. And then in the second half, he scores 11 points in the first four minutes and doesn't score again until over the next 12 minutes. And then, of course, we know he got hurt at the 448 mark. What I do know about this game is that when Yoli was fresh and not fatigued, he was really, really special. In fact, 12 out of the 25 minutes, he scored 27 of 29 points. So the big picture is that when he's on the floor, he was really good. And I, and I do think that probably just not playing, having, even though he's been practicing and I'm sure he's in great condition, just the energy and the excitement and all that comes with that game anyway, uh, he was really, really good to start those two halves and, and didn't have the kind of the impact scoring in, in the second half. If he stays in the game, do you feel like BYU wins it? Yeah, they probably do. Just because his presence alone, Utah would have to guard him differently and help, and then you go to him, it, it, it creates double teams. Uh, though Utah didn't do a lot of double teams because they have significant size, but it's just, it's just a different game with him on the floor. Uh, though he proved in, in, the, in the first two halves that he played, he didn't play and shoot the ball real well the second part of each of those halves, but I do believe that he plays the entire game uh, that they do win. Not having TJ at the end, uh, really hurts him because he's a guy that can probe and, and do things to get good shots at the end of games. Well, the referees make a charge call on T.J. Haas that takes him out of the game with his fifth foul. And so that kind of started the uh, whole train of BYU fans after a frustrating loss. Oh, the refs cost BYU the game. Steve, did the refs cost BYU the game last night? No, listen, you, you, there are calls, and that's not the referees miss calls. There were missed calls in that game, probably on both sides. And uh, one of the things that created foul trouble for BYU is that Utah just pounded that thing inside. And whether it was to bigs or – and uh, for me, Tim Allen was a huge piece of this because they started setting ball screens with other guards where he had mismatches. And he just kind of went off inside and attacked the rim. Uh, so when you're attacking the rim constantly, there are going to be more whistles just because there's more contact. And, uh, but, yeah, there were some missed calls, absolutely. But that's not why you lose games. When you look at uh, what happened, especially in the second half, as BYU had a 16-point lead, but turnovers uh, continued to weigh in here. And points in the paint, 62. And fast break points, 31 for Utah. Where did it fall apart defensively for the Cougars? You know, I, I think, number one, I think Utah made some adjustments, especially when it came to getting out on the ball in a lot of different positions. And Utah has size. And, and certainly Rylan Jones made big baskets, the biggest baskets probably in overtime, but made the biggest three at the end of that game. So it, it's a team, even though they were young, they, they had a plan. And, and then I thought, I, BYU got sloppy with the ball. And those turnovers – really, really hurt BYU when Utah was struggling to score and all of a sudden they get run outs and get easy twos. They get more confidence. But I really do believe in the half court that they, Utah created mismatches and put Timmy Allen in a position to really hurt BYU and, and, and stay in the game and keep it close enough. And then when it got close, the crowd got involved. And, you know, I was surprised. It didn't look like it was a full house. And, and, but when that game got close, the crowd became a factor. Steve Cleveland with us on BYU Sports Nation. At the top of the list, Steve, what is priority number one for BYU and Mark Pope to beat UNLV and then move in the next week, take care of Nevada, and then maybe beat Utah State? Well, I think the first thing you do is you go back and watch film, and, and which they will do. This is a great coaching staff. They're going to go and look at the mistakes that they made, things that happened, and they'll be better. You, you get better in losses. They, they're more painful it's a game that certainly they had an opportunity to win. But that being said, you've got to move on. You've got to get to the next moment. And this game can be really unfair to you. And it's, it's difficult after losses like this, especially an in-state game like this. But I, I think they'll come in. They'll tweak some things. I, I think that 
one of the things that I noticed and, and have noticed a, a pattern of it, end of the game shots, you know, they're putting the ball in here. I loved it when they put Tulsa in, in the post, and but they, they've ended up not maybe getting the shots that they wanted. They were contested. I think one of the things you look at maybe late game situations. I know they do this. Every every good coaching staff works on late game situations, but look for maybe some isolation situations. If Yoli's in the game, it's a lot easier to look at last second shots as well. But I think that's something that deserves some attention because they're going to be in close games, especially in conference play. So that's one of the things that I would do. And then I would put the game behind them because UNLV is coming off a really good road win at Fresno State. They're athletic. They're sneaky shooters. They're not a, they're not a great three-point shooting team. BYU needs to come back, focus on defending, not turning the ball over, and, and, and rebounding the ball like they have been. Uh, they'll, they'll beat UNLV, but they, they've got to forget about this game pretty quickly and move on because and even Nevada, who lost a lot of folks, uh, had a good win. They beat Santa Clara, who I think has a really solid team. They beat them by 30. They lost to Utah by a few, but this is a, a Nevada team you can't sleep on. I know it's at home, and I think that's why BYU will win. And, of course, Utah State's been playing really well, and they've been doing it out with their big guys. So, yeah, there, there's I, I think – when, when you take a look at down the road in these five games, that, that Vegas game, the Nevada game, Utah State game are all going to be challenging. Uh, but I think as they finish up with Oral Roberts and, and Weaver State, they can finish that out. But, uh, yeah, they got to forget about it and move on to the next moment. Coach, I can't help but draw some parallels to a game that, correct me if I'm wrong, you coached in at the Huntsman Center. I think it was 2004. BYU led by as many as 19, could not miss, and then Utah comes back and steals that game away in front of their home crowd. Um, how do you recover as a staff and a team after a mental lapse like that? Well, I think, first of all, you have to be really authentic and honest with each other. You can't act like nothing happened. You, you have to address what happened. Let's talk about it. Let's watch film. And you're not going to spend a lot of time because you're trying to prepare for another game. But you have to, you have to look at the mistakes that were made. And, and it's one of those things that once you've done that, you've watched a little bit of film, you've talked about it, and you try to correct it, then, then, then you move on. And, you know, like that team, we moved on and got to the NC2A tournament, and it, it's just one of those things that happens. So you, you, you realize that, that it is a tough loss, but it's only one game. They, they have, BYU has been playing really good basketball, and they have great opportunities in front of them. And as painful as that is, they'll be better for this. And, uh, and I, I think you'll see it against UNLV. I'm glad you brought it up because I was going to. Yeah, that team, that BYU team you coach made it to the NCAA tournament. So brighter days ahead. Yeah, yes. And it, it, it's a team that if they can stay healthy and, and continue to improve, that they have a chance to compete for a WCC championship and they have a chance to get to the, back to the tournament. You know, they, ha they have to continue to grow and get better as a team. But – I, you know, I, I know the senior leaders are connected. There's a great culture there. Uh, they're they're going to bounce back from this. But it, it's, it's not an easy task. I, I'm just telling you that you can't take anybody for granted at this point in time. And I know that coaching staff won't. But uh, they'll be better for it. And in, tough as it is, you've got to move on. Let's wrap with this. Uh, Mark Pope had an incredible response to uh, when asked about the officials. What's your response to his response? Uh, you know, I tongue in cheek, I guess. Uh, <laughs> you guess? <laughs> so, uh, you know what? Uh, I, I understand how difficult that can be. And uh, I understand the pain and all the little bit of drama that took place after that game that social media loves to think about and talk about. Uh, you know, when I was coaching, those things could have been said and you never heard about it. Uh, but I, I think that, uh, that that's not why you lose games, because of officials. I just And he knows that. Mark is a really good coach, but it's a frustrating time. And sometimes we say things and do things that maybe a year or two later, we think, I probably shouldn't have done that. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You move on and, and, and get the guys ready. And you can't sit around and feel sorry for yourself at this point in time. Too much season left. It was an unfindable response, Steve. <laughs> you can't find yes. it. <laughs> you can't find it. <laughs> Steve, it's great to talk to you. Uh, we appreciate the insight as always. Thanks, guys. Take care. You got it. Steve Cleveland Thanks, on the Deseret First Credit Union Highline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. Coming up.